pertaining to the 15th day of the month of Av, says the Mishnah and the tractate of Tainus, that Amr Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says, there were never such great days of joy for the Jewish people like the 15th day of the month of Av and Yom Kippur. For on these days, the daughters of Yerushalayim and the daughters of Israel would go out into the field and they would make circles and they would dance in these circles and they would say to the boys, Bachor, son, lift up your eyes and see and choose for yourself a bride. Comes the question to mind, what is so great about the 15th day of the month of Av that we say this is considered to be the greatest holiday of the year. So the Gemara goes on to explain what happened on this day, that in the time of the desert, when the Jewish people were in the desert, we know that every year on the ninth day of the month of Av, 15,000 men died because that was the day that the spies came back and they told the Jewish people we cannot enter into the land it's a land that consumes its inhabitants and therefore the Jews began to cry and God said if you're crying I'll give you a reason to cry number one you're not going to go into the land of Israel you're going to spend 40 years in the desert and number two this will be a day of crying for all generations to come and therefore the first temple was destroyed on this day and the second temple was destroyed on the ninth of Av, etc. However, the Gemara says on the 15th day of the month of Av, the people, the men in the desert stopped dying. As we began to explain that, Toysus tells us that every year on the month of Av, the ninth day of the month of Av, 15,000 men would die However, the final year, the 40th year, when it came to the month of Av, the ninth of Av, they once again prepared their graves and they went into their graves. However, the following morning they all got up. And so the Gemara says that they stopped dying. The decree that they should die in the desert ceased on this day. So that is one reason why the 15th day of Av was a great holiday. The Gemara goes on to say, Another reason that Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef both say this was the day that they stopped cutting wood in the time of the Holy Temple, they stopped cutting wood for the altar. And Rabbi Eliezer Hagadol goes on to say that from the 15th day of Av onward the, the power of the sun weakens and because the power of the sun weakens they cease cutting the trees for the altar. Being that the, the trees were not allowed to have any worms, and if the sun was not strong, the trees were not dry, and therefore the worms would go into the trees. So they stopped to cut the trees after the 15th day of the month of Av. And the Gemara goes on to say that Omar Rabbi Menashia, Rabbi Nashia says that this day was called Yom Tevar Magal. This was the day that they broke the axe. And because they broke the axe, they made it into a great holiday. This is the pshat, this is the simple interpretation of the 15th day of the month of Av. It was a great holiday when the daughters of Israel would dance and choose for themselves Shuduchim. And there would be many, many uh, chasanis and weddings that would come out of this day. And furthermore, Earlier in history, it was a day that the men in the desert stopped dying. And the reason I say men, because the women did not die generally throughout the 40 years of the desert. The decree was only upon the men to die, not the women. And thirdly, it was a day that they stopped to cut the wood for the altar. The Gemara gives additional reasons as well. However, we won't discuss it at this time. What is the rem is? What is the hint? The hint is the Gemara goes on to say that on this day that the women would make circles and dance in circles in the fields. The Gemara goes on to say this is a hint for the future. Omar Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar goes on to say that Asid HaKadish Baruch Hu Lasis Machalat In the future 
God will make a circle for the tzaddikim, and every Jew is a tzaddik. We are all tzaddikim. We are all tzaddikim. And God will sit amongst them, big and in paradise. And each one will point to Almighty God and they will say, This is our Lord. So the Rebbe goes on to explain when will this take place? When exactly will this take place? And the Rebbe goes on to explain that this will take place not in the first period after the coming of Mashiach, known as Yumois HaMashiach or Bias HaMashiach, but rather it will take place after the second stage of the coming of Mashiach, which is after Tachiyas HaMesim, after the resurrection of the dead. After the resurrection of the dead, when the souls will return to the bodies, then Gan Eden Paradise will be on this physical world, just like it was at the time of Adam and Eve. And therefore they will be with their bodies, souls and bodies, for the bodies already will be refined. As we know that the body represents the woman and the soul represents the man. And the fact that we say that the women will be dancing in the fields implies that the body, which is the, the holy body of every Jew, which is Am Kodesh, will be refined to a degree that they will sit together with God in one circle. God being the groom and we being the bride. So here to the 15th of Av is a Rem is a hint to the future when Mashiach will come and there will be the resurrection of the dead and then God will sit together with the tzaddikim in a circle. That is the Rem is. What is Drush? What is the homiletics? So the Gemara said that this was the day that the men in the desert ceased dying. To elaborate on this, Toysvis brings down in the name of the Rajbam that really every year on the ninth day of Av, the anniversary of when the spies returned, so Moshe decreed that all of the men should dig their own graves. And all of Klal Yisrael, all the men of Israel, would dig their grave and then they would go into their grave and sleep in that grave on the night of the ninth of Av. The following morning, says Toysvis, 15,000 men would not get up. And this took place for 39 years. The 40th year, again, Moshe Rabbeinu decreed that they should dig their own grave. And the last 15,000 men from the group of 20 to 60 that left Egypt now dug their graves and they got up the next morning. The ninth of Av, they all arose. They were concerned perhaps that uh, they made a mistake on the calendar. So they were told again, go into the grave another time. And they continued to do this until the 15th day of the month of Av. Once the moon was complete, it was wax complete, so Moshe Rabbeinu said, from here we see that you are forgiven from your sins. And so I'd like to ask a few questions. Number one is, why do they have to dig their own graves every year? If 15,000 had to die, they would die in their tents. And then they would be buried afterwards. But the entire Jewish people, an average of 600,000 men would have to go and dig their own graves. Is God so sadistic? Is he actually a God of, of terror? and a God of anger that he has to take revenge on the Jewish people and say, I want you to dig your own graves. Number two is, what happened the, 50, the 40th year? If they got up the final morning, the ninth of Av, and they saw that they were all alive, so why did they go back to Moshe and say, what should we do? And what did Moshe have been to say to them? Well, I don't know, go again, try it again, another six nights. Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't ask God what to do. Moshe Rabbeinu communicated with God. And God revealed himself to Moses. So why did they have to continue going back into the grave for an additional six nights? And perhaps you can say, Yeshleimar, that this was part of the process of tshuva. The reason they died is because they sinned. 
they lost their faith in God. And therefore, every year, by digging their graves, this would cause them to remind themselves of that sin. And as they were digging the graves, each time the shovel went into the ground, they would say, God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry I had this lack of faith. I'm sorry I did not believe in you. I'm sorry I, I challenged your, your promise for just one moment. And they would cry, and they would do tshuva, and they would ask God to forgive them. And give them another year to live, another chance to do right. And therefore, they lived another year, and another year, and another year. Came the 40th year again. The last 15,000 went and they dug their graves. And again they asked God for forgiveness. We're sorry. Now they're doing tshuva already 39 years. And they said to God, we regret what we did. We regret we lost our faith. We want to do tshuva. We want you to forgive us. We want you to give us another year. And they went into their graves. And they got up the next morning. And they were alive. So they go to Moshe Rabbeinu and say, what does this mean? We're supposed to be going into the land of Israel now. Does that mean we are allowed to go into the land of Israel? Moshe says, no. You are only forgiven not to die. However, you are not yet eligible to enter into the land of Israel. Go back into the graves. And so the additional six nights, they went back into the graves. And they said, Krishna Shalamita, they said the Shema, Yisrael, Hashem Alekeinu, Hashem Echad, before they went to bed. As you know, this is the last prayer a person says before he leaves the world. And so they said, Shema Yisrael, hear O Israel, God is our Lord, God is one. And I hope I'll get up tomorrow morning. And I hope God will forgive me and allow me to enter into the land of Israel. And so for six more days they did tshuva. And after six more days doing tshuva, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu on the 15th day of the month of Av, now I have accepted their tshuva. And therefore they will be allowed to enter into the land of Israel. This is the drush. What is the soid? What is the esoteric concept of the 15th day of the month of Av? We find a passage in uh, Zechariah, Zechariah. It says over there, by Yoimahu, on that day, ye, uh, it shall be Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. God will be one and his name shall be one. The word by Yoimahu, ye, uh, ye, uh, it will be, how do you spell ye, uh, yud and he, and again yud and he says Kabbalah that when Mashiach will come instead of having God's name Yud and He and Vav and He it's going to be a Yud and a He and a Yud and a He what does that mean? normally the Vav and the He because it's a Vav and a He which represent the Midos, Zun the powers of impurity have the ability to siphon off energy from the Vav and the He. And similarly, because the Vav and the He represent the concept of Midois and intimacy, therefore the powers of impurity are able to extract this energy to the powers of impurity. However, when Mashiach will come, the Vav and the He will become the Yud and the He. The Yud and the He represent the concept of Ava, which is Chachman Bina, intellect and understanding, which are two friends that never separate. And because these are two friends that never separate, they don't give the power of impurity the ability to extract or to siphon energy from this level of purity. And therefore, we are told that the levels of Vav and He will become like Yud and He. In other words, it will be a constant connection and therefore the powers of a purity will no longer have any ability to draw this vitality from holiness. If that is the case, there will be an end to evil, an end to impurity, and no longer will there be, God forbid, the concept of khurban and gollus, destruction and exile. 
Yud and He is the gematria of 15. The 15th of Av represents this time, this light, and this energy of when the Yud and the He will be constant, and therefore the powers of the impurity will be no more. What does Chassidus say about the 15th day of the month of Av? Chassidus says, why is it that there are never greater days for the Jewish people, like the Yom Tif, the holiday of the 15th day of the month of Av? Because this is the day that the moon has waxed to its complete glory. It's the time that the moon is the largest. And the Jewish people, we count our calendar by the moon, and we are compared to the moon. And this is true for many reasons, because just like the moon gets larger and larger every day, a Jew has to continue to add to his service in God and do more today than yesterday. And furthermore, sometimes the moon disappears, but it's once again reborn, and therefore, God forbid, if Jews are expelled from one country, they will be reborn in another country. So we are compared to the moon. On the 15th day of the month of Av, the moon becomes the largest. It waxes to its complete glory and therefore it represents the, the true power and the true light of the Jewish people. Now one will ask, this is true every month of the year, every 15th of every month, the moon has waxed to its full glory. So Chassidus says that Yerida Tzedek Aliyah, this is the meaning of every descent, is for a greater ascent, being that the 15th of Av is coming after the greatest descent in Jewish history, the destruction of the house of God, the destruction of the first temple, and the destruction of the second temple. Therefore, this descent brings the ultimate ascent, which will be realized on the 15th day of the month of Av. And this is complemented by the Medrash. That the Medrash says that the, the Ari, the lion, came in the month of lion and destroyed the lion on the condition that the lion should come in the month of lion and rebuild the lion. Who is the lion? That is Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He came and destroyed the lion, the holy temple, in the month of lion, the month of Av, the month of Leo. However, this was done on the condition, al that the ultimate lion, which is Almighty God, should come and return in this month of lion, in the month of Leo, in the month of Av, and rebuild the temple, rebuild the lion. So therefore, the only reason why the temple was destroyed in this month is that God is going to return the temple to us this month, however, this temple. The third the temple, the third base on Migdash, will be a lot larger and greater than the first and second temples. And furthermore, it's going to be created and built from God himself. And therefore, it's going to be everlasting forever and ever. And that is why the 15th of Av is so great, is because this is the day destined for God to return the holy temple. To explain this in the language of the Gemara, we said earlier that this day, on the 15th day of Av, was the day they ceased to cut wood for the Holy Temple. And therefore, Rabbi Nasher comes along and says it was called the day of the breaking of the axe. What does it mean they broke the axe? Seemingly, it's about Tashchis. There's a mitzvah in the Torah that says you're not allowed to waste things in vain, you can't destroy things in vain. So if they no longer need the ax, stop cutting wood. But why do you have to break the ax? And the Rebbe goes on to explain that the 15th of Av is really the antidote for the 9th of Av. What happened on the 9th of Av? We said earlier that the spies came back with an evil report and said we cannot enter into the land of Israel. Because of that, God said, number one, you're going to die in the desert. So God brought the decree of death upon the Jewish people. Number two, he said, you're not going to enter into the land of Israel. 
because of this, the Gemara goes on and says that what happened on the 15th day of the month of Av, number one is they stopped dying and they were able to enter into the land of Israel. But really, the destruction of the Holy Temple also took place on the 9th of Av. And the destruction of the Holy Temple, number one, is not only the loss of the Holy Temple, which means the inability to bring sacrifices in the Holy Temple, which was the ultimate purpose of the Temple, to serve God through sacrifices. Number two is, the ninth of Av is a day that the Temple was destroyed, and therefore we have to ask, what was the cause of this? And the cause of this, we know, was Sinas Chinam was unwarranted hatred, that Jews did not love each other properly and found reasons and excuses to despise, God forbid, one another. And because of the hatred and because of the lack of love, the base of Mikdash was destroyed. And therefore the Gemara says that the final reason of why this day was so great is the day because they ceased cutting wood for the altar, and the day they broke the axe. What does that mean? The Rebbe goes on to explain that the concept of the wood that was used for the altar represented the concept of tzedakah. Why was it tzedakah? Because families would donate wood for the Holy Temple. What was the wood used for? It was used to make the fires on the Mizbeach, on the altar, in order to bring the sacrifices. Who brought the sacrifices? There were basically two types of sacrifices. There was the public sacrifice, like the daily tomid that was brought on behalf of all the Jewish people. And then there were sacrifices that individuals brought for a sin offering, for a nidava offering, whatever it was, he had individuals that would bring sacrifices. So this wood was used as tzedakah. It was given as charity so that all the Jews would have the ability to bring sacrifices on the altar. So quantitatively, it helped all the Jewish people. Qualitatively, it was a great mitzvah because it brought God into the temple. By bringing sacrifices in the temple, we fulfill the purpose of the building of the temple. And in return, for Shekhanti B'Soycham, God dwelled in the temple and amongst the Jewish people. And therefore, this is the greatest level of tzedakah possible. So on one hand, the temple was destroyed because of a lack of unity. And here, by, by cutting wood for the temple, they now created a greater unity amongst the Jewish people. However, comes along the final rabbi, and he says, you should know that this was the day they broke the axe. Rabbi Menashia says, you should know that Taver Magal, they broke the axe on this day. What is he adding to what the previous rabbi said that it's a day that they no longer cut wood? Rabbi Menashia is telling us as follows. He's saying that the Mishnah tells us that one was not allowed to use iron to cut the stone that was used for the Mizbeach, for the altar. The stones that were used for the Mizbeach were not allowed to come in contact with iron. Why not? Says the Mishnah. The Mishnah says the reason is because iron brings death. Iron shortens the life of man, and the purpose of bringing sacrifices on the altar is to lengthen the life of man. And therefore, the object that shortens the life of man should not be used on the altar that is supposed to lengthen the life of man. This is what it says in the Tractate of Tamid, chapter 3, mission number 4. In other words, by breaking the axe on the 15th day of the month of Av, says Rab Menashia, not only was this a day of charity, because it allowed us to use now the wood up until the, final, the following year, 
the month of Nisan, because they only chopped wood from Nisan up until the 15th of Av. So you had Nisan, Ir, Sivin, Tammuz, and half of Av, four and a half months they chopped wood. So by concluding the chopping of the wood, we now began to use this wood up until the month of Nisan and bring blessing to the Jewish people. That was Sadaqah. But Menashe comes along and says that the purpose of this day was not only that we stopped cutting the wood, in other words, that we had wood up until the next year, but it was a day that we broke the iron axe. It was a day that we broke the tool that brings death to the world. And therefore, death is no more. On the contrary, it's a day that we bring life and eternal life to the Jewish people. And this is the concept of the 15th day of the month of Av. That we say there was never such great days of joy for the Jewish people. Like the 15th day of the month of Av. For this was the day that he broke the axe. They broke death. They stopped dying in the desert. It's a day that they broke the axe. Because now they had wood for the temple to bring the sacrifices that increased and lengthened one's life. And the ultimate breaking of the axe is the end of Golos, the end of exile when death will vanish from among the world and we will have a time of Yikitsu Vedanu Sheikh Niyafar and those who lie in the dust will rise and sing and there will be the eternal life and therefore God will sit together with all of those righteous people and we will point with our fingers and say this is Almighty God my grandfather, a blessed memory, Rabbi Yaakov Yehuda Hecht, Rabbi J.J. Hecht, passed away on the 15th day of the month of Av. And the morning, on the 14th day of the month of Av, he turned to my uncle and he said, No, ich wart schein for the grace of Yom Tif. I'm waiting for the big holiday. Unfortunately, he passed away that evening on the 15th day of the month of Av. And so we, we await the big holiday. We wait the 15th day of Av, of Lo Yehoyam Tevil Misrael, Ki Chamisha Asa Ba'av, this great day that will be the greatest holiday of all the holidays of the entire year, a day of breaking of the axe, when death will be no more, with the coming of Mashiach and the building of the third holy temple speedily in our days.